college is one of the best times in a person's life. There is everything to look forward to, and you are finally done being controlled by your parents. You are free to go in whatever direction you want to. However, there are certain avenues that should never be explored. Which brings me to why I'm writing this. I was always a sheltered kid, and pretty much never did anything except go to school and do my homework. I don't even think I went to one single party during my entire high school career. That's probably why by the time I got to college, I was more than ready to begin exploring. I was an international affairs major, which basically meant I didn't have a choice but to be well-traveled. Nobody wants to hire an international businessman who hasn't left the US. So I got involved with this meetup group called Just Go Adventures. They basically got together every week and discussed potential travel destinations, and oftentimes would go to them together. I don't remember how it came up, but there was this one time that we got to talking about exploring abandoned theme parks, and the name Sino Wonderland in China came up. It's sort of a knockoff of Disney World that was never completed, and no one really knows exactly why. The thing was that the abandonment of such a massive construction project raised concerns for the property bubble in China. So the Chinese government wanted to keep the status of the construction pending. All that meant to us though, was that there was a massive abandoned Disney World-like park just waiting for us to explore. For a young group of adventurers, this was too much to pass up. So the next chance we got, the five of us pooled our money together and planned out a trip to go visit. Two months later, we arrived in China. We found an independent car rental service that rented us a van to drive out to Huainan, a small city a few hours outside of Shanghai. Grassy fields and mountains littered the roadside everywhere we looked. Finally out the window, I gazed upon a giant Ferris wheel up against an empty horizon. This was the place we had been waiting the last two months for. At the bottom of the park was this sculpture of an old decrepit man with a sign partially hanging from his forearm that read, Wonderland Theme Park. His sign blew in the wind as I snapped a photo of him standing beside the rest of my group. We all then began to climb up the hill towards the park. The inside of it was truly a concrete jungle. You could see mountains and forests off in the distance, but inside the park it was desolate. There were these giant dilapidated concrete structures littering the entire place. One of them off in the distance had this enormous concrete frog with his tongue out at the top of it. One of our group members, Zeke, pulled out a vape pen and started slowly puffing from it. He was sort of the instigator of this entire thing. The kind of guy who would try to ride his skateboard through security and into our plane on the way over. He ran his fingers through these long flowy dreadlocks and pointed toward a pavilion up ahead. At the front there was a sign that read, Crazy Coaster. I definitely had to snap a photo of that as well. Inside the pavilion was this bizarre clown-based spinning ride. Jen, the token hot girl of the group, of course wanted to do an Instagram shoot on top of one of them. She jumped up on one of the ride cars and started spinning around telling Andy to take pictures of her. Now Andy is this goofy dude who always wears Hawaiian shirts and is pretty much obsessed with her, so she had his attention the whole time. Zeke and Paul, who was basically Zeke's right-hand man, decided to head over to the Ferris wheel. I wanted to get some photos, so I went out of the pavilion and started walking around. There was this dark alleyway up ahead that got my attention. I wondered if it was maybe some kind of weird Chinese version of Nocturne Alley. As I entered, I was surprised to see these two beat-up old fiberglass statues of Chinese men in business suits. It was strange though, they looked totally out of place with the Wonderland theme, and one of them was holding what looked like some kind of ancient tome. But I figured the place was pretty random anyways, so I went back to find the rest of my friends. 
When I entered the pavilion again, Andy and Jen were already gone. I left the building to go look around, but then heard the echo of Jen screaming. When I finally got over there, I was relieved to see that she was alright. She was pretty much just watching Zeke as he dangerously climbed up onto one of the ferris wheel cars about 15 feet above our heads. I rolled my eyes as he jumped into the car and swung it back and forth, blowing out giant clouds of smoke from his vape pen. I noticed Andy wasn't there though, and when I asked Jen where he was, she just simply shrugged her shoulders. I turned around to look down the hill at the rest of the park and saw him standing a few hundred feet away in some overgrown brush. I could tell it was him by the Hawaiian shirt, but the weird thing was he wasn't moving and he was in this weird position, just covering his face with his hands. I'm going to be honest, that kind of freaked me out. So I turned around to tell the others and the ferris wheel just suddenly switched on. It then lifted Zeke up to almost the very top of the wheel and abruptly stopped. His Mr. Cool facade immediately broke down and he started freaking out. We yelled up to him to tell him to stay where he was and that we were going to try to figure out the controls to get him back down. After a few minutes of us being unsuccessful though, he grew pretty frantic. He got out of the ride car and began climbing down the side of the wheel. Then without us touching anything, the ferris wheel just jolted back to life. Not expecting it, Zeke lost his grip and fell about 80 feet, smacking into the pavement below. When Jen saw this, she shrieked and absolutely lost it. Paul began screaming and freaking out too and got out his phone to try to call Chinese emergency, but he couldn't hear anyone on the line. Then I built up the courage to go check his pulse. There was nothing there. On this realization, the three of us took off running, not knowing what else to do but get back to the van. It was weird though, I was trying to go down the same way I'd come up, but the theming of the park looked totally different. The area we eventually found ourselves in was this ancient Roman area. Figuring we had gone down the wrong way, I tried walking back up to the ferris wheel a little bit and check where the parking lot was but it wasn't anywhere in sight. Then when I turned back towards Jen, the giant frog statue from earlier somehow just crashed down on top of Paul. That's when the true panic set in. I barely remember the rest of the ordeal, but I know that as we were running, dust began to set in. And it was early too, way before sunset. Then we came upon this old concrete bridge with giant Spartan statues on both sides of it, staring into the distance proudly. As we cautiously walked across the bridge, I heard a cracking sound coming from deep within. Before we even realized what was happening, the bridge was collapsing in on itself. I ran and jumped forward as far as I could and just barely made it across. Jen was not so lucky. I saw her fall off the bridge and get buried under the rock. At that point, I just gave up and covered my face with my hands. After a few moments, it was weird. I noticed my hands were stuck there. I know it sounds crazy, but my arms began to grow cold and tense up. I couldn't feel my legs and I was barely able to breathe. Just as I was almost totally immobile, someone rested their hand on my shoulder. I came out of the trance or whatever it was and saw that it was a Chinese police officer. Suddenly, I was able to move again and they escorted me out of the park. Luckily, I avoided any jail time for the trespassing that occurred. But as far as my friends go, when I told the police about them, they said there was no proof that they had even entered the country. I pulled out the photo of them that I had taken from the front of the park and I couldn't believe my eyes. It was just a picture of these four old beat up statues standing next to the statue of the old man with the sign. I think the police knew more than they were leading on because they took my camera and sent me on my way. 
but ever since then, I've been trying to prove my friend's existence. None of their friends or family admit to knowing them, and there's no paper trail of them ever existing now. I know I'm not crazy. Please, someone, tell me they were real. <laughs>